Hi, guys. Welcome back to Kids Church. Remember, we're doing a story. Good best of all. Let me tell you what it's about. So, someone's coming to town. It's Miss Best of all. And what do you know? She's got a shiny M on her, on her necklace. And she starts telling everyone, oh, you're more important because you're made from this wood and it's this color. And she starts going on about all this nonsense. And the crazy thing is, Lucia and Punchinella, best of friends, stop hanging out. It's ridiculous. And then, to end off the story, last week, it ended like this. They said, from that day forward, Wellingsville began to change. But one person, townspeople took notice of each other's tree types. The walnuts looked down at the pines, the pines looked down at the elms, the maples looked down at everyone, and everyone looked down on Punchinello. It's crazy! Let's see what's going to happen now! Go for it! Best of all, part two. Walnuts formed a club and opened several branches. Elms cut a path and named it Elm Street. Maples built a tree house and hosted M polishing parties. Everyone had a group. Everyone, that is, except Punchinello. Even Lucia ignored him. Hi, Lucia, he would say to her. Yes, yes, she would reply, not stopping. She was, after all, cut from the finest tree, and Punchinello was just a willow wemmick, soft and easily bent. One day, Punchinello felt especially alone. He went to the pine picnic, but no one sat by him. The walnuts were playing games, but no one threw him the ball. He even tried to go to the maple party, but the sign on the door said, Royal Tree Only. Punchinello was very sad. He went for a walk and sat down by the river where the willow trees grew. Why did I have to be a willow? He said aloud to no one. What would you rather have been? The sound of the voice startled Punchinello. He turned and saw Eli, his maker. Maple, Eli continued. Would you rather be made of maple? Punchinello didn't answer. Both sad and embarrassed, he lowered his head. Eli walked over and lifted Punch's chin with a finger. Other Wemmicks are better, Punchinello told him. Who says? Everyone. Eli sighed and shook his head. Come here. The two walked over to a willow tree and stopped. Punchinello, who do you think knows more, the Wemmicks or the Wemmick maker? Punchinello smiled softly. The maker? Of course I do. Do you think I knew what I was doing when I made you? The look in Eli's eyes convinced Punchinello that he was about to hear something important. You are special, my child. You are the way you are because I made you that way. You chose my forest? Yes. You chose my wood? Yes. Willow is just as special as maple? Just as special. Then why do the others treat me like I am not? Here is someone you can ask. Hi, Punch. This time the voice was Lucia's. Punch turned. I'm sorry, she said. I've been listening too much to them and not enough to Eli. Punchinello shrugged. He noticed that she wasn't wearing her M necklace. That's okay. Both smiled. Want to go back to the village, she asked. Today is the big send-off for Bess Stovall. Yeah, I'd like that. The two said goodbye to Eli and walked towards Wemmicksville. Many Wemmicks turned when they entered the village. More than one whispered and pointed as the maple Wemmick and the willow Wemmick walked side by side. But Punchinello and Lucia didn't care. They were glad to be friends again. All of Wemmicksville turned out to say goodbye to Miss Bess Stovall. She stepped into her box and signalled that she was ready to go. Her soldier escorts marched proudly before her. Her bugler sounded the farewell. Wemmicks lined up on either side of the river to watch. 
new members of the wonderful Wemmix Club wore their club t-shirts with pride. Crossing the bridge, the honoured guest waved her gold medallion to the crowd. Farewell, lowly Wemmix. Perhaps someday I'll honour you again with my presence, she shouted. Bess Stovall leaned out of the window of her special box so that everyone could see her. As she did, she leaned a bit too far and began falling, falling. Her tumble stopped when her medallion chain caught on the bridge rail. When it snapped in half, she grabbed one end and held on, the river roaring beneath her. Wemmix cried in alarm. Help her, the mayor's wife shouted. Save her, someone yelled. But no one can reach her, said an onlooker. I can't hold on much longer, Bess shrieked. Soldiers tried. Wemmix tried. No success. They were too stiff to bend underneath the bridge. Let me try, shouted Punchinello. I'm made of limber lumber. Not waiting for an answer, he ran to the edge of the bridge and sat with his back to the river. Grab my legs. When the soldiers did, he leaned back, bent over double and twisted around until he was hanging upside down. Instantly, he could see the wide-eyed Wemmick. She was clinging to the chain, her feet pulled by the river. I'm coming, he shouted. Then, to the amazement of everyone, he bent back, 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 until he was under the bridge, reaching for the desperate Bess. Take my hand, he offered. This time, she didn't care what kind of wood she touched. She grabbed his hand and held on. You must let go of the chain, Punchinello instructed. Bess Stovall obeyed the little Wemmick, letting go of her precious medallion and watching it fall into the river below. Punchinello swung forward, pulling Bess high enough to be grabbed by the soldiers. Within moments, Punchinello and Bess were safe on the bridge and surrounded by Wemmicks. How did you do that? Everyone asked. It's easy when you're made of the right wood, he smiled. For several moments, no one spoke. Then, from the back, one of the maple Wemmicks walked up to Punch. He removed his M from his chain and turned it upside down, making a W. Enough of all this talk about maples. Let's just be Wemmicks. Hanging the W around Punchinello's neck, he added, Punchinello, you're the Wemmick of the day. One by one, the maple Wemmicks removed their M's and placed them on the ground near Punchinello. Soon, there was a small pile of medallions. Even the mayor and his wife removed theirs, though she did take one last look at herself in her M before setting it down. The Wemmicks started back towards town. The last thing anyone could remember about Miss Bess Stovall was seeing the majestic maple down by the river, searching all alone for her precious gold medallion. As for the villagers, they quit talking about ancestries and decided to just be Wemmicks again. And Punchinello? He had a new job in town. Say Punch, a Wemmick friend asked on the way back to the village. There's a ball stuck in my chimney. Any chance you could reach it? And when Punch did, he looked up the hill. Eli was watching from his porch of his house. Punch waved. His maker smiled. Wow! Did you see that coming? You didn't see that coming at all, eh? Hey? So guys, we've been going through talking about courage and uh, we've seen Punchinella, we've seen Moses, David, Daniel, uh, Esther, oh, so many. Uh, who else? Uh, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. It's been amazing watching all these people that they were afraid, but God told them, don't worry, I'm with you. I made you. I know who you are. Hey? And they went and did these amazing things. Unbelievable. So guys, we're finishing off our series on courage. And remember, Joshua 1 verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be bold and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, but be full of courage. The Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So guys, know your father loves you. He made you to be you. And you know what? He's with us. 
wherever we go. So let's pray, all right? Yes, please. So Lord, thank you. You are with us wherever we go. Thank you that you love us so much and that uh, we can be courageous and do anything you ask us to do, even when we're afraid, because you are with us and you made us and you made us perfect. We love you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Guys, tune in next week. We're starting our new series on the power of God. So we'll see you then. Have a cracker of a week. And uh, I'll see you later, Alicata. Oh.